This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, a battery planner, stolen by Camp Power and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? This is the Volvo EX30 Twin Performance Ultra. And in this video, we're gonna find out how good of a family car it is. We're gonna put some Cybex car seat cars and then baby stroller in there. And we'll also walk through some of the interior. So let's start with the front, shall we? So the car has a relatively short hood, that's good, because that means more space in the back. And then we actually have a little front here. It's not that big, so it's uh, enough to fit some cables here. And then in the back we have more uh, lift gate. And then let's do the measurement. So the depth of the trunk is uh, only 71 centimeter. The width is at an hour, uh, uh, one meter. And then opening here, is 67 centimeter. What about loading height? There, 77 centimeters. So that's not optimal, it's kind of high, but at least you can open up this lid and then free up more space. So then we should measure the height with this. Okay, then we get 78 centimeters. So that's uh, pretty good. So in the trunk we have 12 watt outlet here, but only here, not in the front. So that's like the MEB cars, except for Audi. And then here we have button for tow hitch. Wait, like this, click, and then press it again. And then, yeah. And then we have some sturdy hooks here, four of them, to secure the cargo. And then light in the trunk is only that tiny in there. And can you fit a Cybex e and baby stroller in the trunk? Well, let's try. We have the seat pack, which is fortunately smaller than the bigger uh, baby carry cot thing. So uh, the way I would do it is to maybe fold it like this and then tuck it in there roughly. And then we take the frame and try to place it. I think that since I, I, I will utilize the height, since we have short but then tall trunk. I'll put the frame in like this, and this should close. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. And now we fold the seat, and when you fold the seat now, it becomes almost flat floor, so that is very nice. And I have the lid on, and I'm gonna measure first behind the driver, and there we get 151, uh, centi yeah, 151 centimeters, and then the passenger seat has been pushed all the way forward for the maximum space here. Then we get 178 centimeters, and then diagonally, we get 197 centimeters. So it is decent. I transported some IKEA mattresses. They were roll. I had 180 centimeter plus some other uh, two times 90 centimeter mattress, and they actually fit here, but the car was kind of full. But at least you can do some IKEA runs also in this tiny city car. And the cover for the Eastfix base is a little bit unusual. We have this thing here, lip, that reveals the uh, hooks. And uh, now it's really easy to hook it on. But you still have the comfort and the uh, aesthetics when it's not in use. And then how easy is it to put an Eastfix base plus the giant seat here? We'll try. So now I have to take the hooks out over the lips and then, wow this is super easy to see yeah where it's supposed to go in there and there and that's it and then to make the test more realistic I have the Cybex this is cloud set 2 with a water jug here to simulate a baby a big baby oh, oh, how is it to oh okay it is a bit tight here but I can fit it in here Oh, the water baby is getting heavy. What about taking it out again? I do this and then press here and lift it up. Oh, uh, wish I had a little bit more headroom here. So I need to struggle a bit to, uh, yeah. But yeah, it is still good. And now we test the front seat. If we have child seat in the back, how much space do we have here? Uh, I have to adjust so that I'm just Barely rubbing the... Oh, oh no, 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 okay, there, there, there. Oh, this is not that much space. 
I mean, it's still okay. Yeah, for such a compact car, I'm quite impressed that you still have leg room. So you can, at least for me, 173 centimeters. I can stretch, but I mean, it's not super comfortable. On long trip, if I want to recline, I have to go more forward and then I can recline. But then actually, as I go more forward, my knee even hit this part here. So, oh, 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 no, 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 so it's okay, but not superb. Okay, let's measure the width in the back seat. We have approximately there, 128 centimeters. And then the height of the back, whoa, oh, they are short. Um, okay, well, huh? wait, wait, how do you measure the height? 30. 31 centimeter, but now I know exactly what uh, wifey was talking about because uh, I didn't say anything. I presented her the car. We're gonna go on a little local run to the grocery store and she said Why is the seat so short and now that I sit here? I don't know if you can see it. This is so weird man. I never experienced this with any other car before there is a, a, a fist almost a fist of clearance here between the seat and my knee and I'm only 173 centimeter at least I can put the feet under the front seat and normally I don't do this but let's try to measure the length of the seat roughly 43 centimeters Ooh. so in comparison model 3 Highland is around 47 48 centimeter and then the height of the Highland is well, that one is not that much different, 31. So this is a bit unusual. We have the controls for the windows here in the center. It's probably the same wiring because you just have to wire in here rather than all over there. So it is kind of minimalistic, the whole car. Kind of similar to Tesla, but okay. We have two USB-C here. We have a little pocket here. We can put some stuff. Over here we have a shelf. And then at least almost flat floor, door pocket there, and this style door. And then headroom is, uh, okay, it's not a fist, but at least the sun glass thingy goes, um, you can see it there, 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 there. You see that it extends all the way behind my head, so that is good. But uh, the seat cannot be reclined, so it is just one position but it feels okay. Wait, so there is no center console here and also no ski opening. Well, that's what you get when you get the poor man's Volvo. And the seats are quite flat, which is probably good for practical reasons, but then maybe not so comfortable. At least there is some okay uh, comfort here in the two side seats and then some perforations here also. Middle seat is actually okay for a middle seat. It is, uh, roughly slightly less comfortable than the side seats and the charge port is on the left side with the right side not the right side with the wrong side and it has these plugs butt plugs whatever you call it also for the ac i'm actually not sure why because we already have rubber seal here so water and dust should not enter and if you open it you open it to either charge an ac or dc in the front seat we have Electric adjustable seat, but it has only one button, but it is multi-directional button. So you can go forward, back, you can go up and down. And then when you twist it, you then recline. Interesting user interface. And it is actually quite intuitive once you get used to it. And then you need less buttons. Yeah, I like it. I like that, the idea. And then here we can take the steering wheel up and down, but also in and out. And then the sun visor will pivot, but it cannot extend. And also the mirror here has no light. And then why is there even a badge here that says EX30? Is it to remind us that, oh, we are in the EX30, not in the EX90 or the XC40. <laughs> the door here is quite minimalistic. You see, there's almost nothing here. We have this weird door handle, just like in the back. And we have this I don't know, uh, Nordic design on things. 
probably lots of recycled uh, animals in here. No, I don't know. <laughs> we have a big door pocket here with some ambient light lights. And also ambient light goes here. And that way, oh yeah, wait, is this? So the, spe oh, yeah. the speaker is not in the A pillar here, like you would expect it. So the speaker seems to be distributed over here. And I wonder if that is what causes the the spread to be not so good as what I felt like in other cars, even though this is Harman Kardon, it should also be quite high end. And then here we have these uh, blinker stocks, just like in newer Polestar, so, you know, just like here, you probably saw this in Polestar initially, we have the frameless uh, side mirrors. And, and by the way, in order to control them, you have to adjust, you have to go here, and then you can adjust the side mirrors. So if I go left here, for example, I can then adjust it. You will see that the whole mirror, just like Polestar. But you have to now do it here in the screen. Yeah, so it, it's more like Tesla. You see here, we also have opened the glove box here. And the glove box is here, not here, because they're trying to free up some space on that side. And But still, you saw that it was not the best space. So you can imagine if glove box there it would be even worse. But what I love about this is that the open glove box, when you go to the home, it is available there. Yeah, in Tesla, you have to click once in the car icon and then you have to find like, where the heck was it again? Uh, and Tesla is way more cluttered than this. And then you find the open glove box there. But what I don't like about this system, this UI is that if you want to see the trip meter, you have to click once, twice, and then three times. And then you see all the trip status. And also you see that it is a bit bright. Yeah, it is a bright, um, I can show you if we go to settings and then controls, display display brightness is already at the lowest. And also you don't see everything here. You have to go to view all. And then you see that we, we have auto or dark. So there is no day mode, okay? But if, if it would be bright enough, it would switch over to day mode if you have it in auto. But even if we have it in dark mode and the, the thing dialed down to the lowest, it is still brighter than some other cars. If you're driving in pitch dark roads, I feel like it's a bit too bright, but it seems like many Chinese cars, they are kind of bright. They like bright displays at night. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I'm not going to walk through all the stuff over here. It, there's a lot of stuff here to show you when it comes to the user interface, but this is primarily for the interior. So yeah, interesting interior at least. And then oh, another thing I should point out is that many times when I gonna click on the car icon you have to do lots of stuff and like speed limit warning off right and you have to go to settings and then you have to go to driving this is what I have to do every time oh, shit sorry let me adjust the brightness so you see better there and then I have to this reset every time you put the car in drive now and then this shit comes up also this is super annoying because it, it blocks it, it is a blocker and there is no X out okay there okay I have to click a couple times all right all right okay okay I'm, my bad, I should have read the manual, but the fact that it pops up like that uh, annoys me. But um, now I want to switch off the attention warning. Then I have to go here, view all. And then there's a driver alert. Driver alert is here. There's like attention warning, many other cars. And then you can turn it off because it is annoying that the car bugs me. I'm looking at the screen because the screen is the only thing to, where you can control many things. And then when I'm looking at the screen and do something, then the car bugs me that you have to pay attention to the road. <sighs> well, it would be great if I had a dedicated button for whatever I wanted to do, right? Okay, and I'll just put the car in park. All right, and then, yeah, let me show you the rest of the interior. We have, oh, oh shit, now it becomes too dark there. We have, why? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, focus. Uh, it's a bit dark. I need to open the door to let in some more light. But you see, we have one wireless charging pad there, so that is very nice. The other side here is not a wireless charging pad. Uh, why not? I mean, we already utilize the space for it. So they should just copy Tesla all the way and make two wireless charging pads. But what I'm not a big fan of is this holder here because you kind of dig deep. And what I like about the Tesla is that if you have something like this already up and running, you could just lay it down on the wireless. Oh, oh, oh shit, man, oh, freaking clumsy. You can just lay it down in the wireless uh, holder and you can see here you kind of need to push it in and it, it could accidentally 
press some buttons. I don't, I, I, I just have to pull it out like this. Why does it have to be strand? I mean, why does it have to be strapped up so tight? I'm not sure about that. But okay, here we have this open space here with also more ambient light there, and you can close this, and you have two USB C there. It's actually a very nice space here to put your stuff. And then here you can take out the cup holders and you can even take out only one of them like this. So very nice design, but that means that there is no center armrest room here that you will find in most cars. And then here is another minimalistic design, which is that you only have control for either the front or the rear. So if you do this, you see you open that side, but if you want to go rear, you have to click here and then you can open the rear. Okay, uh, most people, they probably only use the front anyway, so who cares, right? Well, in the rare cases when I want to use the rear, now in here in the garage, you can see this clearly, but in daytime, I don't see this, especially in sunlight. So what I need to do is that you get to click and I have to do this to just check, oh, is the rear on? Yes, the rear is on, but no big deal, I guess. And one thing I find strange is that uh, many times I have to click here to find some settings and uh, if I'm driving and I'm not super concentrating on where to press, I might misclick and press the hazard light or the taxi parking light. And why is it even there? Why is it that easy accessible? Because the hazard light is already at the physical button here. So why have it on the screen then? A Volvo safety? And they actually have physical buttons on the steering wheel. I like it. I'm not a fan of the haptic uh, stuff that you find in the MEB cars. Uh, but the one thing I'm not a fan of, and I'm actually not the only one, is these buttons here. Because when you activate the cruise control, you do it here. And then when you want to recall or change speed on the cruise control, you do it here. But you have to be able to, I mean, you have to press here, not here. And you can press here, you see. But then it doesn't react always. But you kind of need to feel this thing here, the little tab, whatever you call it. And then you should press here. Yeah, but then if you press too far, it becomes here. But this is, okay, by muscle memory, you can learn how this is, but it makes the whole user experience slightly worse than optimal. And what is this? Sending data to China. But the headroom here is wonderful. We have more than a fist of headroom. And then the seats are nice and comfortable. They're not super sporty seats, like you find in maybe some BMW. They are also not adjustable electronically but uh, they are perforated but not ventilated but you see we have a little swedish flag here to remind you that this is made in sweden or maybe not so there you guys have it the volvo ex30 yeah like we've seen today it might not have the best space the best comfort but they had to make some compromises to make the car cheaper and smaller but given the dimension of the car i think they utilize the space quite well there are other cars that are bigger in outer dimension, but the cabin space and the cargo space might be on par with this EX30. So that is good. And also we see that we can actually fit some baby stuff in the back and it's still okay. So yeah, based on that, I'd say it will be an okay pass. I don't know about you guys. It might not be like, wow, this is wonderful. It's not like an ID7, you know, but it's still okay for what it is. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.